Hey LinkedIn, and in uh, this video we're going to look at all the filters in Sales Navigator, and there are a lot, and uh, talk through the ones that I think are the most uh, useful. So, company. I'm pretty straightforward in terms of what this one means, current company where they're uh, at, in terms of company headcount. You can decide the size of organization that you want to uh, target. Past company is a new one, and this is around um, finding past customers. So this is a good way to put your book of business in there where people used to work and used to be clients and are now somewhere else. And you can use this as a way to potentially map uh, where your clients are going. And that might be a nice route uh, into a new conversation. Uh, company HQ, again, pretty self-explanatory in terms of uh, where that is. You can get pretty granular on this. So if you're managing a book of uh, business in a particular territory or particular geography, you can really narrow down where you want to be. Uh, role is function. So you can search everything by business functions around uh, here. Uh, current job title, that specific job title that is in the title you are looking for. So that will create quite a narrow search for you. Uh, seniority level, again, you can decide what levels of seniority you want to uh, search through. Past job titles, so again, if you're looking for people that were in a particular role or that have been promoted, if that is a potential sales trigger for you, you can use this. Uh, years in current company, how long they've been at a current company for me years in current position is a useful one i tend to go for less than one uh, less than one year because that means they're still new in role and there might be opportunity to um uh, get in there and present something personal geography is what it is uh industry so again bearing in mind this is the individual now so this is the the person this is organizational this is um so where the person is based what industry they say they are um, in, first name, last name, uh, profile language, uh, years of experience within particular role, members of groups, and you can now search schools and colleges. So on your um, uh, tap into, forgive me, your school alumni network, uh, posted content, keyword and articles has never ever worked for me. So I'm not entirely sure why they still, uh, they still have that. Then up here, uh, buyer intent. So buyer intent is, is what they uh, they say it is in terms of uh, in terms of this LinkedIn are being relatively coy at the moment about how that is being um, uh, looked at, but it's interesting to see, to see this uh, development. Account has buyer intent here. They are um, clearer in terms of this uh, this approach. So in mail, ad engagement, company page view, and profile views. So you can select this filter, and then LinkedIn will serve up the organisations that are adhering to these behaviours, if you will. Might give you some insight as to. Um, the right people to approach in your um, uh, target or territory, especially if you're looking for um, net new, or if you're doing land and expand across the strategic accounts, you can start to work out maybe where particular personas are showing um, uh, interest. Category interest, this is still relatively new. Um, they put 30,000 products and services into SalesNav, so you can search things like ERP software, for example, or CRM, or advertising software I mean, it's a, it's a huge thing in terms of what you can search but again these category interest um, filters will then start to determine which audience is showing propensity of interest possibly to buy towards a product or um, uh, products or services uh, following your company super useful you can start to track who starts to follow your um, uh, organization so if somebody's clicked follow on a company page um, something's shown interest they've seen something they like and they have clicked uh, follow so i use the following company uh, filter as a way to connect with new people hey thanks for following the company It'd be great to have a conversation understand what it was that caught your um, attention uh, viewed profile recently is um, really useful again because you can track this and you get a, you get a different um, perspective from what you see through linkedin.com but also means you can then use this filter but then drill down all these other filters to meet the exact type of profile view that is relevant uh, to you to then use that as a way to re out, reach out. And as I've said in other videos, if someone's looked at your profile and you're not connected to them and they are a potential buyer of what you do, send them a connection request and ask what caused them to look at your uh, profile. Let's have a conversation. Connection routes, uh, multiple routes in here. First degree, obviously you're connected. Second degree, someone knows someone. Executive team link connections. So that looks at your uh, CXO, VP and director level team link connections. Team link looks at uh, everyone. Look at my other video around team link if you're not sure what that means. Fundamentally creates a virtual network across your organization. Group members, third degree connections. Third degree, potentially a little far out, but some organizations I've worked with use that as a route to find that net, net new um, uh, conversation. 
connections of is specifically within your own connections. Uh, team link connections, you can search particular members within team link to see who they're connected to. Past colleague, so this will start to filter out everybody on LinkedIn who used to work at the same organizations that you used to. So again, that re potential referral route in, I, I know we don't know each other, but we both used to work for X company, or maybe they are still at the company that you want to target, and you can use that route um, in. Uh, shared experiences, I've never used it, um, could be one worth uh, experiencing. Uh, recent updates, job changes, super useful to track um, who's changing roles in the last uh, 90 days or other changing roles and being promoted. Again, if someone's new in role or being promoted, great way to start and engage a, um, a conversation. Posted on LinkedIn, really, really important filter this because then this filters out everybody who's active on the, on the platform. And then that is there to help encourage you to engage in conversation through likes or comments on their um, uh, on their post. A like, if I remember, is very much uh, triggers the author to get a notification. If you comment on a post, that's everybody who's engaged on that, uh, that uh, post. So posted on LinkedIn, really powerful, really useful filter to be um, using. Mentioned in the news, it says what it is in the tin. If you've got leads saved up and or uh, your tracking organizations, this will show you people that have been mentioned in the press. And you could, again, use that as a route to start a conversation um, with people. Personas, uh, you can set up multiple multiple personas so that you always default um, to that. Account lists, really important. If you're running a book of business, if you're running a portfolio of business, create your account lists because then you can search specifically around those 5, 10, 15 um, companies. Lead lists, again, really important to um, help you uh, manage your lead personas, people you know, people you want to get to know, influencers within uh, within an account or within an industry. And also more importantly, this now helps you personalize the home feed in terms of what you see. And also lead lists are gonna be critical because the new relationship map, which is currently in beta within LinkedIn, slated to be released through uh, August and beyond. Really, really cool, I've seen it. Um, that is how your relationship maps are then going to be built by LinkedIn or rather by Sales Navigator based on lead lists. So lead lists are really important to um, focus on. If you've got a CRM connection, um, then you can start to filter out people that are in CRM, not in CRM, etc., cetera, uh, et cetera. Uh, people that you've interacted with. Again, this starts to help you uh, filter out people that you don't want to, that you've already um, uh, engaged with. And then save leads and accounts is a way to um, filter out those that you're already doing or, or, um, uh, or not doing. And of course, the key thing with all of this is think about you know, building out these uh, these searches, using these filters to get to that ideal um, audience, which could be decision makers, could well be um, uh, champions, it could be influencers to decision makers, and then start to create these, uh, these searches, start to build them out around these account lists and lead lists. And the key thing is then is save these searches here, because when you save the search, that's then when Sales Navigator starts to run, run in the background for you and starts to do the heavy lifting and keeping you up to date as to what's happening across your territory, across your clients, by whatever the, uh, the, the filters are. So I really encourage you to start to double down in terms of um, these filters, start to experiment, uh, think about how you can use keyword searches within those um, filters as well to start to really narrow down to specific personas. But the direction of travel where Sales Navigator is going is insanely powerful. And the key thing is it's starting to automate a lot of the business development, the sales prospecting in terms of finding those people. The art and all of this then is what to do with that data and insights and then how to engage effectively through Sales Nav, which fundamentally is then through LinkedIn and what mechanics are happening in terms of that side around the likes, the comments and uh, engagement. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think, how you're using it. And of course, feel free to reach out if you want any help on this.